Well, let's continue on with our discussion of an introduction to G-code bus or getting started in the simplest way we can. So I'm here looking at GK Plus and at the end of the previous movie we put three symbols or three copies of a two copies of a single symbol there. So I'm going to now select those and erase them with the right button of the mouse. So I pick with the left button, right click and then select erase. Now let's imagine that this is a courtyard and we want to put sort of an entertaining area in the middle of it and surround it by a series of symbols and let's imagine that it's a concept design. So we'd need an area, uh, a rectangular area, um, placed somewhere near the middle to indicate our, the area for entertaining. What I'm going to do is change the background colour at this stage. You will probably still work with a black background like you see here, but just for ease of showing you, let's pick background colour of white. The first step would be to place a rectangle and you can pick the rectangle tool from a number of different directions but we'll pick the drop down menu so draw a rectangle two points and I'll click sort of somewhere like so and then put the rectangle in. Now we know from past experience that a rectangle about 13 foot 9 inches wide so that's 13.75 width and about 14 and a half 14 foot 6 inches 14.5 and there we have our rectangle which we know from past experience works quite well as a zone where we can set out some tables and chairs and maybe screen part of it. I'm going to draw in the boundaries. Let's imagine that this courtyard is configured and formed by buildings on two sides. So we'll draw a line again and I'm going to pick up the end point of this line here. I can come across to the entity snap area and just jump to it. So we're letting the software do the work for us. The other thing you may remember from the first movie is that we put polar on. That's the red polar switch down at the bottom of the screen. So I'm drawing vertically down and I'll right click and exit. Now I can call up the last four commands by right clicking. I'm going to repeat a line and we'll pick it up here and I'll right click and pick snap overrides rather than go across to the entity snap toolbar and I'll pick endpoint in this way. So I get the same result as we had before and but it's some, some people find it a little easier to work that way. Now we want to square off this corner. That can be done with the modify and fillet command. So we pick fillet. Fillet would normally put some sort of curve between the two lines but if you have a setting and the default setting is zero you can use fillet to square things off and that's a lot quicker than trimming and cutting overhanging edges off. So we now have our, um, have our square that's going to be hatched. All this space is enclosed by uh, buildings on either side and the buildings would of course have some sort of path around them so let's use the offset to offset the path by uh, say three foot path so modify and offset again and this time we'll pick the object which is that line there and right click and left click on distance so we're going to offset that path by three feet so indicate the side and then we can click here and indicate the side and then right click. You do need to exit from this command. We can repeat it but I want the fillet op 
option so I can pick that one and that one it's now filleted but notice that at the crosshair cursor which is changed to the um, to the mouse symbol is saying pick the first object it wants you to continue filleting so I right click and exit okay so we have a, a path now running uh, we have a building to the right a building underneath the path running around there and we want to connect this path now to the rectangle which denotes that area that we're going to pave and organize to be a secluded uh, area maybe as a breakout area if this was a conference you can use whatever approach you want when you're learning GCAD plus so let's now draw that path so I can right click pick the line command and I want to I don't want to come to the middle, I could pick the middle, come across, down and connect with the path around the building. But I'd like to vary it a little. I'll right click and come to snap over eyes and I'll pick an unusual one called nearest. And that one locks onto a line. See how I can slide up and down. But it locks nicely onto a line. I want it about a third of the distance down. It's not critical. Um, and now we're going to use another line off to the right remember polar is on so this line will be drawn orthogonal and we'll, we'll say we just type a three and hit enter that line is three foot line now notice how i can go at 45 degrees that little dotted line extends down and you get confidence on the angle because it's showing an angle of 315 let's imagine we went down here at a fixed distance um, say uh, 3 feet 9 inches and we could say that's 3.75 in decimal feet and now we come down this direction to connect up and the simple way to do that is to draw this new line perpendicular to that path around the buildings and we can do that by clicking perpendicular here and click down and then right click to exit so now we have uh, the centre line, if you like, for a path. What I'm going to do now is select each line in that group of three and right-click and then join them because then we'll be able to offset the centre line uh, to give us the width of a path. Now we've been working on uh, a three-foot wide path. You might want this one for dramatic effect to be four-foot wide. So we can say right-click offset pick the line and return the distance now three feet is not what we want we'll we'll say through point and distance again I'll, we want a four foot path this time so i'll type you could type 2.0 but two would work and indicate the side and then pick this side here so we exit from there so here's the path running through there and to my eye that looks a little too large so too wide rather so i'll right click and erase these so you can design on the fly let's pick the offset the object to offset is this one and we'll use a three foot pass so we need a new distance and we have to set a new distance 1.5 and enter and then the side, pick up the middle one there and exit from there. So I'm relatively happy with that. We can now remove the centre line. So here's our new path leading to this area. So it's now time to, I think, bring in some symbols and start populating this area with some symbology. And remember, this is just a concept for how this space in this courtyard might be used. So I'm going to go library and what I'm after is some sort of group that might might be sort of sketchy. So I'm going to pick sketchy. We have like a whole lot of groups. See there's a, um, a structural group, uh, an open group of symbols, ones with light touch. But I'm after some sort of sketchy. So I'll pick this one and I'll bring this one in and I'll insert it into the drawing 
and here it comes. I'll roll out with my mouse and just pop this group over here. So there's a, there are a lot of symbols, of course, in this group. It's just one, uh, one entity at the moment, and I can select it. This time I'm going to break that up into its constituent parts. So I'm going to say I'll explode that group. I'm not sure that I need any of these up here. So I'm going to use a crossing window, click down the bottom and drag, and you get an interesting effect on the cursor there. And then I'll, so I'm selecting all of those, and then I'll erase that lot. So here I can now start to, in a sense, dress up the design. Now let's, let's just take one of these groups in here, and we'll use the measure command and we'll bring that across 2.7 um, feet in diameter and I think we've got a reasonable amount of space through here so we can right click and copy it and put that group down there and we could put another copy of it um, here and right click and finish now if I pick that group you can see I can pretty easily rotate it and put it into position. And just as we did before, you can break up these other sorts of groups. So I could pick that one and explode it. And that gives me a chance to take individual parts of that group and just stamp copies of it into the design. I quite like this group here. I'll, rather than copy, I'll just drag it and maybe I'm hitting the enter key, maybe grab this group over here, pop that down, rotate it and move it into position like so. What I'm after is a smallish symbol that might be used to fill in in and around the path. You can see I need to break that one up, explode it, and I need to move that one perhaps into position. I can copy it and put it here. Let's, let's imagine we can, we can scale that one. Let's, we imagine that we want to use it as a very small species, so we could go 0.5 and 0.5. We're halving the, the size of that symbol and then we can copy it some more so we can use it as some sort of close in planting to further define the entrance. And maybe we want to put, maybe it's a striking sort of azalea or rhododendron in here, we we'll copy it like so. So I hope you can see how relatively easy it is to build up the, um, the concept plan for this design. And don't forget, keep on exploding it, select this symbol, it could be a tallish tree, and we're going to scale it this time, rather than type a number, we can just dynamically indicate like so. You might adjust the see-through uh, ability in that particular space, but we don't need to worry about that now. So I'll copy that one up and rotate it just a little and explode it and then move and copy things around. So I hope you can see how relatively easy it is to build this sort of model up. And remember, we created a layout view, so everything that we've been working on sits in that layout view. The pre-drawn one also has its logo on it, and we want a better view, I think. And we want to magnify that view so that we get a really nice presentation on the layout sheet. Display it on the layout. And then, 
So there we have our design. It's, it's distracting to see that floating viewport border and we can easily change its colour to be white on a white background. But I digress. What we'd like to do now is to hatch the rectangle to indicate that we're going to put some paving in the area. So that's done with draw and hatch. We have to pick up a hatch pattern and we're quite likely to use the GCAD Imperial pattern file and once that pattern file is loaded you can use all sorts of um, hatch patterns. You can use a series of crosses or dots or um, whatever. You can have um, different types of gravel patterns or we can have um, there's an interesting uh, hedge pattern. We can just use parallel lines if we want. Let's try this rubble wall one and I first select the entity, that's just the rectangle and then right click and we've got a density of 1.8. That may work okay but we'll probably have to change its density and I think we do. We come over here, it's, it's far too tight a scale so let's change it to 10 and see what we get and unselect all. So you can see we've now hatched that rectangle, we can change those hatch patterns easily. So we've reached I think the end of stage two of showing you sort of getting started with GCAD Plus. We might at this point remove some of these, you, you might well use symbols like that if you do an elevation view, but that's for a later time. So I'll pick this crossing window, right click and erase. You can also hit the erase key on your keyboard and I'll regen the drawing and zoom extents and there we are. No colour here, you could pick the hatching and set some sort of colour give it a little more oomph and we'll unselect all. We'll leave it for now and move on to the next one where we'll start assigning some species to these symbols and quite possibly change the symbols as well. Line weights on, we could take line weight off and line weight on makes a little bit of difference, it's finer now. Some of these symbols here, these sketchy symbols have some quite thick line weights associated with them. If you wanted to edit it, you could say, I'm going to edit that block, pick that line, and it's being given quite a, a width of 0.1. So if we went to 0.05 and hit enter and close the block editor, you can see we've got a finer line around it. 